Well, Lumps and Shaw to Anya Tai, Kondel Leitrim, August Renoi, Leshna Fremantle Dockers. Anya, thanks very much for being with us, and you're very welcome. Yeah, no worries. Thanks uh, very much for having me. Anya, I suppose we need to start back. This is obviously your third season with the Fremantle Dockers, but just in week one, you made your debut. How was that to start off with and, and to come back, I suppose, to, to really get on the pitch for the first time? Yeah, no, it was a, it was a really special experience. Um, I think kicking it off for us with the home game uh, against West Coast in a derby, which is a massive deal over here. Um, yeah, in, in front of our home fans, it was five and a half thousand there, huge atmosphere. It was, yeah, it was, it was definitely a special experience. And on your with the, the ACL, you just had terrible bad luck, two pre-seasons in a row with the ACL. What was it like coming back from that and, and how did you put a plan in place, I suppose, for the rehab? Yeah, I guess I was, I was quite fortunate, obviously, over here, there's huge support in terms of medical s and and rehab physios and, and all that sort of thing. So um, that side of it was was kind of taken care of and you didn't have to worry about it, which is is definitely one ease um, off the shoulders. But yeah, after that, it was just kind of week by week, um, day by day, session by session. And yeah, there was there was certainly plenty of a couple of steps forward, a couple of steps back. But um, yeah, just, just keep grinding out and, and we got there in the end. And Anya, you stayed over there last summer, um, I suppose, to, to keep going to the programme of it. Was that a tough decision to make, to not come back to Ireland for the, the off-season and to just push on over there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I suppose, especially in the, in the current climate, I guess that travelling and everything isn't, isn't the easiest thing to do. So, um, But yeah, I just get that, at that point in time for me and for my rehab and the injury, it was the best thing to do. So um, I was very happy that the club obviously supported me hugely in that decision and if I wanted to go home, they would have supported me on that side of it as well. So, yeah, look, it was it was just one of those things. But I said, especially the, the way kind of things were at home, and we're, we've been fortunate enough in Perth um, to essentially almost live COVID-free for the last 12, 18 months. So, um, yeah, I just said, look, I'd try and make the most of the opportunity, give myself the best shot and, and see where it takes me. So, Well, it, only, it has taken you to a start in Jersey, and I suppose, like you said, a brilliant win in round one. But... Um, definitely at the weekend it, it was a huge victory for you again and, and a definitely a derby going in against the GWS Giants what were the feelings going into the, the match and I suppose the confidence maybe from round one yeah it was definitely for us I suppose again a big step up and you want to build on your performance um, every week um, probably a bit of a chaotic week for us to be honest trying to because we're, we're packing up and heading on the road for three weeks so it was um, a little bit of extra kind of stress, or impre- stress and, and pressure on that side of it but yeah, we just wanted to really, I guess, build on build on the start that we had given ourselves and the momentum that we had created in round one. And yeah, we were lucky enough to, to be able to pull it out of the bag um, again yesterday. So yeah, just hope to hope to keep that momentum going and, and get a couple more wins under the belt. And Andy, you mentioned there that you were packing up, but you're going to be based in Melbourne. Um, whereabouts are you based? Are you going to be staying? Is it a hotel? Have you got kind of um, accommodation, I suppose, of houses for the, the next couple of games to be in Melbourne area? Yeah, so at the moment we're um we're in kind of self catering apartments in a hotel complex. So um yeah, with the with the COVID restrictions, it's just trying to minimise close contact and things like that. So we all have our individual uh, little apartments. We have a kitchenette, um yeah, as as normal little study area, desks and stuff. For there's a couple of the girls obviously working remotely as well. But um yeah, we're we're fortunate enough. We still have uh, gym access, pool access. We were able to get down to the beach this morning for recovery and things like that. So. We're, we're trying to keep it as normal as possible, obviously, but um, the, the circumstances, they are what they are. And in terms of how the training has been stepped up or changed, do you see it as more tactical now on these last few weeks coming in, for, I suppose, from pre-season and to start into round one, round two? Has it changed to a tactics training rather than the running, the I suppose, the strength and conditioning from the pre-season? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like we always say for us that the pre pre season that we do before we even get into official pre season is probably the hardest in terms of running and and K's and the legs. Once you get into pre season, you get to actually play footy and uh, and have a kick. And the closer it gets to the season, yeah, the the less um volume I guess you do. We still try and keep that intensity up, but yeah, the the volume and the amount we do probably comes down a a little bit. And yeah, it's definitely certainly more focused on how we want to set up and um, what we need to do to counteract opposition and things like that. So. Yeah, a little bit more thinking goes on rather than that. Um, yeah, just working hard. And your coach, um, Trent Cooper, I suppose, was talking about it on you that it's he feels it's the best time ever the Frio have been prepared, the strongest crop, the panel all together. Do you feel that confidence in the team? And even after round two there with the win against the Giants, I suppose, the West Coast Eagles in the first, was that something that was was coming through that confidence that you had that full panel and yourself, of course, ready to go? 
Yeah, definitely. I think there's there's probably been a couple of things leading into this season. We've got um, about five or six new faces in the off season, and that injection of youth always brings plenty of energy and, and kind of a good buzz around the place. And then yeah, on the injury front as well, um, we're we've kind of been been very fortunate, I guess, to be almost at full strength. Um, which again plays into once you have competition for places and those girls fighting tooth and nail to get out in the park, that just lifts the standard week on week. So yeah, there's there's definitely been been a really good buzz and um, plenty of excitement and energy within the group and yeah, hoping to to take that into the season. And Anya, for you have been lucky not to have been hit, I suppose, by those major injuries that some of the other teams suffered in round one. But um did it surprise you three ACL injuries? Um, three big players gone from, from round one but it is something I suppose the AFL um, W have looked at is it something that they're they're worried about is that something you kind of heard about in camp as well yeah I, it's just it was three huge players across the first round as well and, but I, I think it's across all sports really and, and men's and women's it's, it's just a risk of, of playing contact sport and you look at the risk factors and especially at AFL W level at any high level league, especially female sport those risk factors are just um, higher than, than a lot of other sports but um, there's this huge work been put into it at club level and across the AFLW as well to try and mitigate those risks as much as you possibly can um, we're, we're really fortunate we have Kate Starr as our high performance manager and yeah she puts in a mountain of work and I've no doubt that the, the strength and conditioning staff across all the clubs are doing the same so um, it's just one of those things in sports I guess it, it happens across the country and across the world but yeah it's definitely a huge blow Um both individually to the person, but also to the team when, when that happens. But yeah, hopefully um, hopefully that's the worst of it around, um, out of the system in round one and things can look up going forward. And going forward on into round three, now you're going to be facing off against Richmond. And obviously, I suppose every match brings their own rivalries, their own team ones. You're calling what in round four, but what would you be expecting, I suppose, against Richmond and, and maybe what you kind of in, in your role and the rook position and everything with it as well? Yeah, I guess Richmond are, are relatively new to the competition. I don't think we've actually uh, ever played them in the last two seasons. So um, it's certainly going to be a new challenge and a new test. It's, it's a, their home ground as well. And, and they've been really good at filling that out with support over the first couple of weeks. So um, we're certainly going to be in for in for a big test uh, come Saturday evening. But I think a lot of the time we'll, we'll still just focus on how we want to play, how we want to set up and, and kind of execute our roles to the best of our ability. And um, trust the system really and hope that that's enough to get us the, the points on the day but yeah, it'll definitely be a new challenge and a new test from a uh, team we, we haven't come up against before Anya I'm sure your club at home Kilturbert and Leitrim would have been happy to hear about your GA skills and your ladies football skills coming in handy with the what they might have called maybe a hand pass over the head but um, it definitely Absolutely. it was great to see those transferable skills but how much do you still see that it's maybe you know the advantage or maybe a, a surprise attack that they're not really expecting exactly what you might do because it's it's not maybe the same as what they would have done as, as AFLW players from when they began playing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's probably what makes the Irish players stand out a bit is just that that instinct and yeah, just doing almost what we would uh, in Gaelic. And like you said, it's very hard to defend against because a lot of the time we don't know what we're going to do before we get the ball, never mind the, the opposition. But yeah, I think it just adds a bit of uh, extra flair and kind of excitement for um for certainly the fans watching it over here, they get pretty excited when, when any of the Irish girls do something out of the ordinary. But yeah, look, I guess for us, it's just trying to use that as a strength and bring that unpredictability and, and hope to yeah get a bit of an advantage out of it. And Anya, with your own background from UL, I suppose PE teaching with maths and then sports science as a master as well, psychology. How has that helped uh, in even resilient and coming back from the ACL and in adapting to a new sport, a new country, a whole new environment? Yeah, oh, it's been huge. Um, I, and even just having the confidence to to get involved and play at that level was something that before I went to UL, I guess I, I definitely wouldn't uh, have had. That gave me the opportunity to test me against the best players in the country and, and kind of give myself that confidence to be able to stand up and hold my own. Um, but yeah, everything across the strength and conditioning, high performance, like the amount you learn, especially at, at any university, outside the classroom as much as inside the classroom is just a huge asset. And yeah, certainly I, I was fortunate to spend a, a really enjoyable five years down there and definitely holds me a good stead going forward. And Anya, in terms of, I know you weren't in a classroom, obviously, for the two years with the ACL, but was it something like that of watching on the sidelines, maybe picking up for tactics since you couldn't be involved in the, the way you would have hoped to from the very beginning? Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose over here, the, the tactics and the technical side of it is is an awful lot um, 
kind of more in depth than at home. So the amount of vision that we were able to watch game analysis, looking at how we're setting up, how the opposition were setting up, like that's something that I guess I wouldn't have been exposed to beforehand. And yeah, when I look at my knowledge and understanding of the game, when I came in initially to where it is now, there's, there's a huge game there. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, I guess, take the silver linings wherever you can. And, and that's something that, yeah, I've definitely learned a huge amount about the game itself over the past two years. Anya, when you went over to Fremantle, it wasn't the, the 14 Irish players. You definitely helped to start off the trend and bring some over. But what's it been like playing against, I suppose, Breege and Cora at the weekend? And you'll be coming up against Sarah Rowe, Ashling Sheridan with Collingwood in round four as well. Yeah, it's great. I think every game you play and there's, there's Irish um, on, on the opposition, it just brings an extra kind of added element to it and a um, bit of excitement. And just even getting the opportunity to catch up with the girls and having a bit of a chat after the game is always nice. And even when we're watching the games and, and having a look during over the course of the weekend as well, you're always keeping an eye out for the other Irish girls in action and I'm hoping they do well. So yeah, there's a, there's a good buzz and there's always a good bond between all the Irish girls looking out for each other. So yeah, it definitely brings an extra element to it, both uh, I'm sure at home, but also over here. And only this is the sixth season of the AFLW, but what changes have you seen or have you seen development, I suppose, in the skill level, uh, the effort and even the amount of players that are coming to the game in those six years? Yeah, absolutely. When when you look at the strength and depth of, of squads, I think from even, as I said, my first year, three years ago to now, the level of, of talent and skill is, is huge. It's definitely increased massively over just that really short period of time. Um, both mature age talent who obviously have gotten the chance to develop at club level over those course of years, but also the, the younger it's co- girls coming through. They've just been playing footy since they were seven, eight, all the way up. Haven't had to step away from it. And yeah, the skills they have, you know, the, how quick they are with their hands. Um, yeah, once they come into AFLW level, they're pretty much ready to go. So um, it's definitely yeah, evolving really, really quickly and, and skill level is increasing at a huge rate. And from the players you're coming up against, are there any particular ones you're looking forward to? Any particular rivalries, I suppose, or ones you didn't get a chance to play in the first season or second season against? Uh, yeah, there's, there's always a couple of couple of big ones, I suppose. For us, um, it's that, that Western Derby against West Coast is always the big one. But uh, looking forward to the next couple of rounds. I know um, there's been definitely a strong rivalry against Melbourne in the past as well. So um, that'll certainly be one to look forward to towards the end of the season. And North Melbourne as well have always been been really, really strong and up there at the top of the ladder. So that'll be a good chance to test ourselves uh, again in the next couple of weeks. Free, of course, are top of the ladder now after round two, and that's obviously a big confidence booster. But how tough is it to stay at the top of that ladder? What effort is it taking now for recovery and being ready for round three in Richmond? Yeah, that's it. And, and the longer the season goes on, it, the, the tougher it gets. It's 10 weeks, game after game, back to back. And I think that's where the, the strength and depth of your squad will come into play, particularly this season with, you can see uh, the impact of COVID, this players in and out due to health and safety protocols. So yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a hugely challenging season, but I guess for us, it's take it week by week, try and chalk up as many wins as we possibly can. And um, yeah, but once you're in, in the top couple for come finals, that's, that's where you want to be. So if we can stay up and, up and around that top couple of spots, we'll be very happy. And Anya, are you happy, I suppose, with the position? As a forward, that's where you've always played with Leitrim, with UL, but it, do you see yourself setting fully into that role now or do you still see that maybe there's somewhere else you'd like to try out on the pitch? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy out of forward. Um, I think at the moment, um, yeah, I'm obviously playing mainly as a forward, but also giving a bit of a chop out to him in the ruck um, from time to time as well. So, yeah, it's a nice balance, to be honest, at the moment. Because, like you said, up forward, you can still kind of play on those instincts that you would have um, kind of honed I guess back home playing Gaelic but once you get out to the middle and the rock it's also a little bit more of a challenge it's a little bit different and you're probably around the ball a little bit more than the forward line so yeah at the moment I'm kind of finding the balance quite nice you're, you're getting a good mix of both but we'll see as the season progresses kind of wherever you're needed on the team really you're, you're just happy to do your job Brilliant and Anya any message for the folks at home? Oh, just a massive shout out for all the support I guess I was actually you know dated with messages before the, the first game the debut and yeah the interest there's, there's certainly an awful lot of people around Controbert and Leach from tuning in um, which has been absolutely fantastic so yeah huge thanks for the, the level of support and yeah keep keep on board keep on the bandwagon as I say Well they're very proud of you and listen thanks a million for talking to us the best of luck against Richmond in round three and enjoy the relocation to Melbourne for a couple of weeks no worries, will do. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anya. Sloan.